Hello YouTube. This video, I wanted to uh, again readdress the Ubinex Mercury 2 camera. I think one of the coolest cameras ever made. Uh, I just got this one from eBay. I paid $15 for it and the only problem the seller was aware of was that the focus ring, this right here, was stuck. And sure enough when I got it it was very very stuck. It wouldn't budge at all. So uh, that was the only problem I saw with it so I, I wasn't quite sure when I, what I wanted to do with it. I opened it up and I also noticed, you can't see it here, but um, the rotary shutter here was dripping with oil. So someone had pumped that little pinion port there full of oil. It was all over the shutter. Um, other than that, the camera appeared to be in better than expected condition. Uh, it's not pitted up. The finish is fairly decent. These post-war uh, Mercury's had a different casting uh, than the pre-war Mercury ones, uh, and they didn't hold their finish as well. But this one was in a particularly good condition. Anyhow, moving right along, I couldn't get the focus ring to move at all since obviously I've taken the uh, lens off. Couldn't get the, the thing to move at all. Um, I've since gotten it to work, and I'm going to go into that. Um, the and the the problem with these is the problem with many other cameras is uh, the lubricant. Uh, I don't know what kind of lubricant they actually used, whether it was plant based or animal based or what kind of base it was. Um, I've never seen a petroleum lubricant turn into adhesive, but whatever they used back in post-war uh, mercury time uh, all these years later uh, very nearly becomes glue so I took the lens off which just unscrews it comes out as a unit <clears throat> the first thing I did was I got my heat gun this happens to be a commercial grade heat gun that I bought probably before most of you watching were born. In any case, uh, I took it, and let me adjust this, took my heat gun, with the lens off, I wound the shutter, oh, which is already wound, set it to bulb, oops, which is actually working now, the bulb wasn't working there quite the way I wanted it to before. I'm going to set it to time. That opens the shutter and keeps it open. I took my heat gun, I set it to hot, and it, this one will go pretty hot. Uh, much hotter than a hair dryer. So I put it right over the, the mouthpiece on the, on the heat gun so it would blow hot air right through the back of the camera and heat up this innermost most ring. Let me make sure you can see that. Yep. It would heat up that innermost ring. So I did that. And I wasn't really concerned about it because this the entire mechanism and body are metal. The only thing I had to be concerned about was the leatherette, uh, which did loosen up in a couple of spots. But you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. So I heated that thing up until it was very nearly too hot to touch. And I, and I grabbed the ring and it was stuck in this position. And I got it so it would move just a tiny little bit. So I worked it and worked it and worked it. Uh, it would cool off, I'd heat it up again and work it some more. So once I got it <clears throat> to a point where it would move, a little bit I took because I'm patient like that I took one of those jar lid grabber things put it over the ring and took a big beefy set 
of channel locks. Now, I can't remind you enough that all of these things that you're seeing here are awesome ways to destroy a camera. That being said, I put the thing, the jar grabber, over the ring and using just the tips, okay, just the, the flat tips, not in here because this has sharp teeth, but the flat tips, I grabbed it gently and just started to rock it back and forth getting a little bit more motion each time it would stiffen up I reheat it and start again when I got it so I had it turned all the way to its closest setting that extended this tube and now there's a tube inside there that's brass that is also fully exposed or almost fully exposed. Once that was done I took this stuff. This is a little tube of croil. Uh, their, their thing is the oil that creeps. It's like a penetrating oil only not quite as aggressive. I would take a toothpick, dip it in, and then set it right in the crease of each threaded ring. So using this as an example, this spring is threaded, and it's also a left-handed thread. I would dip, put a dot, and a dot, and it'll wick right around. I would do the same thing on the inside where there are two sets of threads exposed. And then I would just work it, and just keep on working it. Now it's still not great but it's better than it was and if I keep oiling it and working it eventually it will loosen up in fact I'm gonna go ahead and hit those one more time I know you can't see this but once you've got it open you will see what I'm talking about there's a brass threaded ring with an aluminum threaded ring inside of it drips of oil and then just work it to get that oil down into the threads where it'll help break up that mystery lube uh, now that it's semi semi softened up and then after working it a little bit I would put it to again to its closest setting which is one to one foot to nine inches I guess <clears throat> so that as many threads are po as possible are exposed inside and out and I would take q-tips dip it into a little cat food can of lacquer thinner start cleaning those threads. I would actually work this a lot longer. I'm just doing this for demonstrative purposes. Get in there, wipe those threaded surfaces clean. And if you can see that, that is a dirty, nasty Q-tip covered with whatever that lube used to be and then repeat the process. Drip that oil in there, touching it right to the threaded surfaces so I can direct where the coil goes. Do it to the outside. A couple drips. Cap that off and then just keep on working it and eventually not right away but eventually that lube will come out of there and 
these are the q-tips I've used up so far that's how many q-tips so far I've done just reaching in there wiping out that lube and then reapplying so this is a slow process there's nothing quick about it <clears throat> but it is now freed up it just needs to loosen up and I'll keep that up over a period of time the next thing when I'm satisfied with uh, its motion I'll uh, dry it up blow it out and then add uh, probably a synthetic lubricant to it um, the nice thing about these is as far as I know this thing this uh, focusing ring was never removed that's a good thing and you'll notice well you may not notice but if you have one in your hand you'll see there are three screws the secure the measured cover to the actual threaded I don't know what you'd call it the actual threaded ring that does the work uh, the nice thing about this is <clears throat> given the alignment of these these three holes it only goes on there one way so it's as far as I can tell it's impossible to screw it up uh, somebody did have this one off because these screws visibly have been removed visibly have been removed you take the loop and you get right down there and you look and the heads of those screws are buggered up but I suppose somebody just like me wanted to give it a go get some loose misplaced oil up off of here again it's not going to be real visible uh, but there are two screws just inside the ceiling edge of the camera there's a screw here and there's a screw here take those screws out this just comes out like that which is very cool because it shows you the inner workings of the camera without actually having to disturb anything and from this point I know you can't see it uh, but you can see all the moving parts uh, you can see how goobered up with oil this center shaft is and how dry everything else is uh, So again, you can see, hopefully, the inner workings, as I said, oil soaked, center shaft, everything else is pretty dry. I'm, I'm really not sure what should be lubed and what shouldn't be. So I'm going to leave most of it alone. I am going to put some oil on these two bevel gears right here. One has a shaft that sticks through there. Uh, and I'm going to put a little bit down here at the bottom of the gear uh, everything else looks pretty okay as far as I can tell I'm going to show you how this this shutter works uh, you set the shutter by turning that knob clockwise right now it happens to be set for uh, time exposure so press the button it opens up now how this thing does what it does is okay so you wind up the shutter like that and then you press and turn your shutter speed like that and what that does is it changes I know it's upside down let me do this again what it does is it changes 
the size of the slit in the shutter. Got one edge right here, and this thing that's turning is adjusting how big of an opening there is in the entire disc. So this is set for, let's say it's 200th of a second. So that's the amount of opening in the disc. I'm going to have to do this a little bit upside down anyway. Um, so at, let's say we'll go to a thousandth of a second, which was, makes this interesting because it's one of the very few cameras that could actually do a thousandth of a second. It's just a slit. So when this thing spins around, it's just a slit of light that goes by the film, uh, the film emulsion side. Now, one of the problems is the shutter is soaked with oil. Now, it doesn't actually interfere with the speed of the shutter because the speed of the shutter is constant. The only thing that changes is the size of the actual light opening. But I want to get that oil off of the two blades anyway, so I'm going to gently, 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 gently put my finger, my thumb, on that shutter. I'm not going to press on it, I'm just going to put it on there, release the shutter, and then very gently turn it, or let it turn. And if you can see that, there's a shiny spot there. That's all the oil, and this thing had been soaked. So I got a shop towel soaked in alcohol. I'll turn that a little bit more. I've done this several times already. Uh, I want to get rid of that, all that oil. As I said, it doesn't really interfere with the working of the shutter. <clears throat> it just doesn't need to be there. So having wound up the shutter, thousandth of a second, a little tiny slit right there, the shutter turns at the same speed at a thousandth as it does at a tenth. And that's how it works. It just spins it right around. So, and you also want to advance the film before you set your shutter speed. So we're going to wind it up again. And now I'll set it for, I don't know, a thirtieth of a second. So you can watch that open up. I'll set that to 30th of a second. So now you've got this much space that's going to let light through. So that when you push the shutter release button, a big portion goes past the, the uh, film gate. And I think that's pretty darn cool. I think that's just about everything I wanted to cover with this. I'm going to put this back on. So, I'm going to put this back on. It goes down from the top because there's a pin up here. Down from the top, make sure it sets on that pin. This should be smooth, the two joints. I'm going to put the screws back in. And using my left hand and my continuing efforts to keep my hands out of the way. those screws back in and like always tweak and then another tweak uh, this this uh, these cameras have a button release that opens the back right there on the bottom it has a knob on the front for using the film and then you turn which way that's a little stiff turn the arrow to where it says rewind and that disengages the spline with a sprocket so you can rewind your film and I don't think there was anything else I wanted to cover those are the two major issues and what you haven't seen 
is that uh, during bits of filming I actually switched to uh, I know I'm not focused here on this journey I switched to WD-40 uh, squirted into I don't really know what this is uh, I used to be in recycling this came in a box a whole shitload of these came in a box uh, there's some kind of irrigation syringe uh, not a hypodermic but an irrigation syringe of some kind doesn't matter that's full of uh, WD-40 and I've been again soaking the threaded areas a little more heavily with this stuff this stuff has had a little bit more of a dramatic impact I can feel a little extra looseness since I started using this I'm still getting old lube out I'm sorry I can't show you that uh, let's see so down in the hole if you can make that out you're gonna see two aluminum rings with a brass ring in between that's your target point uh, as I'm doing this I'm watching to see yeah there it is brass and aluminum that's your target point then you just keep on working that thing back and forth at least that's what I've been doing There's probably another way perhaps a better way probably a better way I've used one of these cameras before and I got really good pictures out of it I'm taking off a little bit of loose oil there with some alcohol and we're gonna clean up these threads also before I put the lens back in that lens won't be going back in right away because uh, it's just not loosened up, loosened up enough. But I think that's everything I wanted to cover.